From time to time, I found that the topic of liminality comes up rather frequently in the retail and urban exploration communities, and on some level, I think that is part of what intrigues people when looking at a space that has been abandoned, a point when a location becomes what people might call a liminal place. The topic of liminality actually covers a vastly large and broad array of different topics. It describes the in-between or the middle ground, the time, place, or thing that can seem mildly familiar but simultaneously strange and foreign. It's the period of in-between, no longer, and not yet. Literally, a liminal space is a door, wall, window, or other separation between two rooms. In a more figurative sense, it might be the period in between grade school and high school, or high school and post-high school life, be it college, a job, or maybe even taking on the journey of a YouTube channel. From my perspective, I could see liminality also applying to a shadow. Any shadow will always have some level of a fade between the darker spot and the lighter spot, and this faded area could be considered liminal. This region of the shadow is not really lit, but it's not really darkened either. Even if an intense light source is close to the subject, you'd still be able to zoom in and see a blur between light and dark. Even if, in theory, there was no blur, there'd likely still be a line in space where it's not lit but not dark, where you could see a light spot and a dark spot at the same time. Liminality certainly can encompass nostalgia, although I'd argue liminality doesn't necessarily include nostalgia. Let me know if you'd like me to do a video about nostalgia on the channel. I'm sure there are various corners of that topic that we could take a look at. In the case of places such as retail storefronts and interiors, liminality can often describe a place after it has closed but before something else takes over. A place like this can seem familiar and feel like you've been there before, but simultaneously you haven't, and it may even feel very strange or foreign. It can also be a place that feels like there should be people present, yet no people are present, and that is why the American suburbs can often be described as liminal. It feels like people should be there, but it's so quiet in these areas and lacking in people to the point that it feels rather eerie or surreal to be there. There's actually a Greek term for this, and that term is kenopsia, which is defined as an eerie or strange atmosphere where there'd otherwise be people, but it is now abandoned. Try going to downtown Cheyenne at night, maybe around midnight. A lot of times it will feel very eerie to be there at that time. I actually strongly noticed a taste of liminality during last year's Christmas parade here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, as I traversed the passageways that connect to the streets where everyone was lined up for the parade route. Nobody would be on the side streets, but large swaths of people would be gathered along the parade route. Liminal places can feel like no man's land, like you shouldn't be there, while simultaneously they can feel lawless, like anything could happen. They might even feel inescapable and downright claustrophobic in some cases. I don't think I can talk about liminality without bringing up the creepypasta that captured what most would agree is a liminal space. Specifically, I'm talking about the back rooms, a fictional location that started with a real photo of a real place that felt liminal. What may surprise some people is the recent discovery of where the original photo, taken in the year 2002, was captured, the photo which would later inspire the creepypasta. From my understanding, the specific part of the building where the 2002 photo was snapped was located in what is now an RC racetrack for remote control cars. There are other videos that go way deeper into how this discovery was made, but this is the overgeneralized gist of the story. More recently, I stumbled across a video from the YouTube channel Kaufman, which was a take on the fictional back rooms. The video, in my opinion, depicted one of the most insane back rooms that one could imagine, one which has walls that literally glitch out, exits that are blocked by boarded up doorways, and one exit that somehow leads you back to where you started. What I've realized as I dived into researching this topic is that the idea of liminality in liminal spaces or liminal times is quite subjective, and in fact, incredibly so. To some extent, our lives could be described as liminal, the time between birth and death. Liminality can be made up of times of crisis and turmoil, or they can be more positive, perhaps a, perhaps a business starting to set up in a new storefront, or a grand opening that introduces the idea of what's to come at a business. In some respects, I'd even go so far as to say 
this very YouTube channel is liminal. Although I have my ideas of where I want to go, the future isn't written and I don't truly know what is actually ahead on this channel. I certainly don't know everything that tomorrow might or might not bring. Really, if you think about it, liminality is absolutely everywhere. It's in the cafes, it's in the theaters, it's in the lobbies and waiting rooms. Perhaps it's even in the time and place where you are right now watching this very video. In a more figurative sense, you might be in between jobs or classes right now, or you might be dealing with a situation right now that prevents you from traveling much, at least outside of your city. Maybe the beauty of it is that there's probably something to be learned, something that this moment is somehow preparing you for, even if you can't see or understand how or why. In the case of retail, maybe this is a store about to open, or maybe it's a business owner retiring and moving on in life. Maybe it's even wondering how I will end this video, which I guess that in itself makes this video liminal. Hmm, interesting. I'd like to thank my channel members who further support this journey, whether through YouTube or Patreon. I did recently relaunch my merch shop as well, and it does include a design that pertains to the topic of liminality, all links in description. But until next time, peace out everyone.